Hello everyone. Today I'm going to present a case study on amniotic fluid embolism. It is a condition uh, which is considered as emergency in obstetrics where the amniotic fluid enters the main bloodstream of the mother which further causes cardiovascular collapse. Let's talk about this condition and learn more through a case which has a similar condition. Our patient is a woman aged 28 years. She suddenly collapses during labor. This is her fourth pregnancy and she has had three previous spontaneous vaginal deliveries at term. This pregnancy has been uncomplicated and she has been admitted with contractions at 37 weeks and 6 days. On arrival on the labor ward, the fetus was palpated to be normal size, cephalic and three-fifths palpable abdominally. So, cephalic refers to the position of the baby. There are mainly four positions in which a fetus would be seen. Cephalic, breech, oblique and transverse. Uh, during labor, cephalic position is seen in a fetus. And three-fifths palpable abdominally refers to uh, how much percent of the head of the fetus has entered the pelvis. The cervix was 3 cm dilated and the membranes were intact. Blood pressure and urine analysis were normal. Initial auscultation of the fetus was reassuring and the heart rate has continued to be normal on intermittent auscultation. Five minutes ago, spontaneous rupture of membranes occurred during a contraction. With a large gush of clear fluid from the vagina, the woman reported an urge to push at that stage and then become confused and disoriented, saying that she could not breathe and was going to die. Immediately following this, she collapses during labor. On further examination, the woman is unconscious and unarousable to painful stimuli. Her blood pressure is 98 by 40 and heart rate is 120 per minute. The oxygen saturation is 86% on air and respiratory rate is 20 per minute. The heart sounds are normal, but on chest examination, there are inspiratory crackles throughout the chest. So usually in amniotic fluid embolism, the amniotic fluid rushes into the main bloodstream of the mother and enters the vena cava and through the superior vena cava it enters the right atrium and right ventricle and it further reaches the lungs. So the inspiratory crackles caused in this patient might be due to the embolism of the amniotic fluid. The abdomen is soft with intermittent contractions continuing and in fact the fetal head is now visible at the perineum. There is no vaginal bleeding. And as I mentioned earlier, fetus was palpated to be normal size, cephalic position and three-fifths palpable abdominally. So, a fetus is either 5x5, uh, 0x5, by 1x5 by by or 2x5 palpable. In 5x5, by by, the fetus is considered as free. And in 0x5, the fetus is considered as engaged or 3x5 refers to the majority portion of the fetus head is below the pelvis. And only 2 by 5, 3 by 5th is palpable abdominally. The cervix was 3 cm dilated and the membranes were intact initially, but later there was a rupture seen in the membranes. The diagnosis is likely to be amniotic fluid embolism. A differential diagnosis includes pulmonary embolism, myocardial infarction, and vasovagal attack. Let's learn about this condition. Amniotic fluid embolism is a life-threatening childbirth emergency in which amniotic fluid enters the bloodstream of the mother, triggering a serious reaction which results in cardiorespiratory collapse and massive bleeding. So, in this condition, amniotic fluid is caused due to the rupture of membranes. The amniotic fluid enters the bloodstream and from the bloodstream, it enters the superior vena cava, flows into the right atrium, then reaches the right ventricle. And from there, it travels through pulmonary artery to the lungs. So, hence it results in cardiorespiratory collapse. Amniotic fluid embolism is suspected when a woman giving birth experiences very sudden insufficient oxygen to body tissues, low blood pressure and profuse bleeding due to defects in blood coagulation. In order to diagnose amniotic fluid embolism, there are a few important factors that must be present. These are the diagnostic conditions which are required to be fulfilled. To conclude this case as amniotic fluid embolism, the diagnostic conditions are hypoxia, hypotension, acutely severe hemorrhage and 
it should occur during labor or up to 30 minutes after labor. How to manage this condition? The baby should be delivered immediately as this will facilitate more effective resuscitation of the mother. In this case, a simple forceps delivery should be performed. If the baby was not deliverable vaginally, then immediate cesarean, cesarean section should be performed. Massive postpartum hemorrhage is very likely and syntocinol infusion should be commenced with further postpartum hemorrhage strategies such as ergometrine, carboprost, embolization or hysterectomy anticipated. So postpartum hemorrhage uh, should be treated with drugs like ergometrine and carboprost which causes vasoconstriction and thus reduces the bleeding. That's it for today's session. Thanks for watching and please share this video. Thank you.